grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel just read from St. John chapter 8. We focus on the question of the crowd, who do you think you are? Before Abraham, before the waxing and waning of the tide, before sound or even light, before there were roads or trains or airplanes, before Prilosec and Prozac, before Lipitor and methamphetamines, before malaria and AIDS, before hatred and racism, before pedophilia and rape, before divorce and children without fathers, before the heartbreak of this life, before loneliness and depression, before death, before anything, before everything, Jesus is, not was, is. He is the great I am. He is always in the present tense, never before or after. He is without beginning or end. He is the divine three in one who spoke from the bush to set his people free from slavery. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the word of the Father's Spirit. He is love incarnate. All things were made through him, and it is only through him that all things will be remade anew. He is Mary's son and Mary's Lord. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one who died for the sins he did not commit and rose victorious with the indestructible life that he now gives to you. All the earth is in his hands and he rules from his Father's right hand with love and mercy for you always and evermore for you. And somehow this is hard for fallen sons and daughters of Adam. They think themselves greater than they are. They are blind and deaf to what they do not wish to see and hear. It is easier to hide in the sand with cotton in the ears than to hear the simple reality that they are not God. They want to live a life of significance and control. They want their deeds to be remembered. They want to wage wars, great and small. They want to make the world a better place, whether the world wants it or not. They want to build a tower to the heavens. They want to reach, they want the kingdoms of the earth to bow down to their ingenuity and wisdom. In a word, they want to become gods, knowing good and evil, and reveling in their own power. What they cannot bear is a god who would become a man. God, who cannot be contained by the heavens and the earth, surely cannot become man. The mystery of the almighty God contained in a mere person, a baby, a fetus, no, it cannot be. If God were to become man, at the very least, he should be the greatest man who ever lived. Beautiful and terrible, smart, and to be feared, strong and cunning. He should be a leader of men, the product of many years of careful work and planning and nurturing. Surely if God were to become man, he should be the greatest man ever. That isn't Jesus. Jesus is not that man. He is a lowly bird, a carpenter turned rabbi. He is greater than all and yet he is nothing to look at. He is greater than Adam and all Israel. And he stands before the leaders of that same Israel and says that he is God in the flesh. Really? That backwater 
carpenter rabbi? He may be worse than that shepherd David, if that's even possible. That is the best God can do? What is God saying to us? What is he saying about us? Is he saying that we are that lowly, that broken, that in need? So they reject him. And in doing so, they reject the word that is alone their very salvation. They reject the one who is, who was, and who is to come. They kick against the pricks, like Saul on the road to Damascus. They take the Lord of life and to kill him. They don't want that kind of God. They don't want the kind of God that would become lowly like them because it reminds them of their great need and brokenness. They won't turn the other cheek. That's the weaklings. They won't show mercy because they want to make sure that everyone gets what's coming to them. They will not stoop down and help that sinner on the road, that woman caught in adultery. They will not get dirty with the man trapped by a demon. They will not touch the suffering, the lepers, the drug addicts, the murderers, the gossips, the backstabbers. They are above such people. Because they will not wash the feet of those in need, because they see themselves as better than the broken, they are blind and miss their own profound brokenness. So they reject Jesus. And in rejecting him, killing him on a tree, they reject their very humanity. They fling stones at the cornerstone and rock of their salvation. They reject Jesus. So you, every time you refuse to serve your neighbor in love, every time you look in lust toward another to possess them no matter what, every time you take what is not yours, every time you speak ill of your friends and fellow redeemed, Every time you set yourself up as one who is oh so better or smarter or wiser or holier than those others. Every time you press another's sins against them, force their sins upon them and will not let them go in forgiveness. Every time you do these things, you do, as do I. Every time you do these things, you reject Jesus anew, like those people so long ago. But there is another way. There is submission, the mighty stone and rock, and that rock is Christ. Fall upon this rejected stone and be broken. Be broken, but don't be afraid. Confess your sins. Re recognize them for their destructive evil. Come clean. Be who you are, a broken sinner desperate for Jesus. Be for who you are, for Christ is who he is for you. Always for you. Only for you. Christ comes to you now with healing in his wings. Christ comes to you now, not as a judge, but as your Savior. Christ comes as the great and everlasting door, as the one great final sacrifice for your sin and mine. He comes to redeem you from your empty way of life. He comes to interrupt your road to Damascus and hatred. He comes to pick you up on the road, to wash you, to make you clean. He comes to feed you, to give you the drink of ever-living waters. He comes to give you the bread of life, the bread that gives immortality and the life that never ends. Your end was never in doubt. God is always a God of mercy and compassion. He comes to you humble and lowly. He comes to you in peace as the Prince of Peace who reconciles us by his blood. 
come and trust the word made flesh. He is your Isaac. He is the ram caught in the thicket of your life. He is the one eternal sacrifice of all time. You cannot be harmed. You may be rejected by the righteous and holy of this life, but you will never, never, never be rejected by God. He is God for us. He is Emmanuel. He is I Am. He is your God. Behold Him now. Amen. In the strong name of Jesus. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting.